ya tifo ya makuwa badeli update tv ya besa msene na mba chane so wa mba heti aduma mba subscribe wa mba like asha mawona pinse mi bi eti so enye bi eti mese mse mba jemre ni adaje ni aboro muntente mnya kuti insema nedi utregu ee mba kaya enche bia na mpp primary sinu parliamentary na ekoso ee nona insema ekoso during dia mvoti no ekamese ansue ni na efa brai bubia ekokoso na dedi geti ni biji jiska ansano mwiti mi ako ako tuwa bano na enu na ee john huji swedi ti mbiya betu tujwa echi mwise ee ni ma ee kusu wa maimu han ee ni ya yi nyanyi na the strong one na ako ma yisi na echi mwise se yisi na binyanto bwasi ya nwa edikiti ee mpp4 na na suwa edikiti ee members na na se delegate na ee bubu wapa yi bwos ee ni ma mpp4 ya no ee ne wye koto abba kis wu hiye sika ansano ako tu Ati fu yu mungu yu kuti ense mna yaba Di aka humbiya na yu shu edmiba mbedumu Delegate But one thing that was striking was the fact that Monies change hands As we saw in other elections as well And within both the NDC and the MPP You see a blatant display of money When it comes to some of these things And the delegates are fast becoming entitled to think that it is time for us to reap. They call it cocoa season. And I find it very, very dangerous. Because we're beginning to get to a point where we are commodifying our politics and our leadership. So it goes to the highest bidder. So if you are not able to marshal the resources, you don't have money to pass around and dash to people or give to people, then you are not fit for purpose. You are not fit to lead. And that's where the problem is. And that explains the, the lots of square plugs we have in round holes carrying themselves around as tin gods and doing nothing. That explains it. So many of them who are not fit for purpose, but because they have money, they have the support of the powers that be, they have the support of the grassroots because they feed them, they give them money when they have to give them. And you find that this a very brilliant and excellent candidate has been just sidelined because... Somebody has money. We have to do something about it. This is where I want to see the Electoral Commission come to the table. And as part of his mandate to educate the citizens, do something about it. And not wait two, three weeks before election, come and do plenty, did they? Mark you, we're going to have district level elections. You haven't heard from the Electoral Commission in a long time. And they haven't had a good name for a long time. But towards the district level elections, you'll see them, they'll come. And then right after the district level elections, they'll vanish. Same thing with the National Commission for Civic Education. Now I see that they are doing a few, you know, stuff and putting it on their social media pages. But that public education for the people to know that it is not all about monetization must be done. And it must be done forcefully and strategically. Because we're getting to the point where the, the folks who are qualified will step aside and allow people who just have money but may not have their minds to lead well, to come and lead us. And if we do that as a country, we will run into a ditch even more than we are finding ourselves now. We need to wake up. Some people lost the 2020 elections because they didn't have money. Now, the question is that we want to stamp corruption. But if the delegates continue demanding and the candidates continue giving to them and we all pretend that nothing is happening, where will the candidates... After they have cleansed power, where would they get the money to repay? They have to do something. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. And that's where corruption gets entrenched. And that's why it will get the special prosecutor to be emotive and near tears. And call, he, he, a fine lawyer is now calling himself Ankwanuma. A very fine lawyer, like you say, Jabin. It's a wake up call. The elders, the peace council. CDD, IDEG, all of those bodies, they must begin speaking up and they must speak up very, very well. The monetization is becoming too many, too much. We can't take it. Now, this morning, I went to the National Theater yesterday. I will tell you about the National Theater. But first, let's do another Kwani Kwani with Giba. The Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association of Ghana. You know that the National Media Commission has been 
um, on the back, on the next of Unia FM, Unia TV. They've been asking questions and actually applying sanctions and asking the Advertising Association of Ghana, Advertising Association of Ghana to stop doing business with Unia FM and Unia TV. Even before giving Unia FM and Unia TV an audience to hear their side of the story. The National Media Commission at the very top has two lawyers who have also practiced as media people. So lawyers know that the due process is to have the other side a chance to speak. It's basic. Because if I come to say that Janet Kwesin has stolen my money, eh? and then I say, oh, Janet Kwesin, then maybe six to scans and says, okay, uh, John Hughes, sit here. Janet Kwesin, sit there. Janet Kwesin, did you steal his money? Or Janet Kwesin, did he steal your money? That, uh, the, the two must be brought together. Then you ask the question. And then whoever is the arbiter would decide whether or not Janet is speaking the truth or Johnny is speaking the truth. That has not been done as I speak. Pull up the Giba letter for me, please. They, they wrote and they said, look, they are frowning on are the actions of the NMC against Unia TV and Unia FM. The Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association notes with deep concern the, gray, the recent communication by the National Media Commission to the National Communications Authority and the Advertisers Association of Ghana regarding a call for the suspension or revocation of Onya TV and Onya FM's broadcasting authorizations. GBA frowns at the actions taken by the NMC in addressing the issue of the alleged ethical uh, journalistic infraction by the two stations for the reasons that the association believes there are far more avenues to explore in addressing the matter on hand, such as giving the opportunity for fair hearing, listen, fair hearing to the stations, rather than pronouncing sanctions upon them to the extent of alerting the Advertisers Association of Ghana of a notion, a notice of suspension without due process. Giba believes that such actions which are tantamount to depriving the stations of the advertising revenue is unacceptable. The fact that the NMC sought to cut off the life support of the stations by writing to the AAG is damaging. Giba is, will always advocate for the sanctity and sanity of the broadcast airwaves as we always do. Working in collaboration with institutions and stakeholders signed Cecil Sonquamil's president. This is what Giba wrote. You saw the tone and the language. He said they find it damaging, they find it wrong, and they say you should not cut off the... Now, give me the N NMC's response to that. And sometimes you get to think that maybe somebody sitting in his hall, you know, and, and is tired and is deciding to write. Here's the response. The letter I read to you, that's the response of them, the NMC. It's dated December 1, <clears throat> released on a holiday. 2023, dear sir, Give a press statement of November 2023. We write with reference to your press statement issued on Thursday, November 30, 2023, regarding the Commission's intervention to grant Onya TV and Onya FM their wish to exit the broadcasting market by unprofessional practice. Insinuation. Our notice of suspension stands without hearing. To extend that, the stations invited this upon themselves. Please note that your press statement is of no consequence to the process. Just say, what you know? What What you But what you know? We, right? It says, um, to the extent that uh, the stations brought this upon themselves, uh, your press statement is of no consequence to the process. We wrote to you out of courtesy. So if it is your wish that we do not grant you that courtesy, in a future, we respect that. This was when, after Giba had said that all the correspondences between Onya TV, Onya FM, and the National Media Commission, Giba was not in copy. They said that. Now, NMC says, we are writing to you out of Ketsi. If in future you think that this Ketsi is not accepted, then we will withdraw, we will respect it. Regarding how we deal with other organizations, including the Advertisers Association of Ghana, the ordinary rules of etiquette would require you not to attempt to dictate to us. So, GIBA, Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association, all broadcasting uh, organizations in Ghana, they, they belong to GIBA. GIBA has a very tight relationship with 
um, the Advertisers Association because they will bring adverts, they will bring all of that. The NMC says that regarding how a, a major stakeholder like Giba deals with another major stakeholder like the Advertisers Association of Ghana, the NMC, whose establishment law, number one, is supposed to help media to come up, says they should not dictate when you're actually cutting off the life support. Pomposity. Right there. Read this one. We also wish to provide you information that they claim in your press statement that the commission acted without giving the opportunity for fair hearing to the stations rather than uh, pronouncing sanctions upon them has no foundation. Question you want to ask George Sapon, Yabwedwa Ebofo and the people, all at Sam George, everybody at the, at the media commission is that, did they afford Unia FM and Unia TV opportunity to be at the table? It's a standing question. It's outstanding. That has not been answered. So when you say it has no foundation, what exactly do you mean? What exactly do you mean? Have you given them an opportunity and they refuse to attend to the opportunity? Have you set up an investigative body to sit and review it within the seven days mandate that your own law says that you should do? Have you done that? You have not done that. So when you say that Giba has no, no foundation because they said that, it means that you are telling the, the, all the people at Giba that they do not know they are left from their right. In the meantime, you are the ones behaving as if you don't know you are left from your right. Because if you knew your left from your right, you have an establishment law, you have whatever it is, all the statutes are there, you would have organized that meeting within seven days, a very short period, and put both parties on the table and say, you said this about this. That's why I use the Janet Crescent, Johnny Hughes example, that you person A says person B has stolen my mango. Person B says I've not stolen the mango. Bring all of them to the table and ask them a question. And then out of the answers they give, you can come to a conclusion. Somebody tag the NMC, even if they have a social media page, and ask them whether they have done that. Now, it says NMC has not issued any sanctions on the offending stations yet. Sanctions include when you tell Advertiser, Advertiser Association of Ghana not to deal with the people because they do so at their own risk. That one is Father Christmas freebies at Jatofi. Even the threat of authorization, is it the NMC's job to, 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 to cancel authorization? I thought that was the mandate of the NCA. So why is the NMC arrogating powers that they do not have upon themselves? Powers that you do not have. You are arrogating. Me, me, we are both tenants. And you, you are dictating, you are trying to, you are supposed to be a commission. That is supposed to be helping the media and the press freedom and everything else. You are not even shy that in a country where we have dropped from place 30 down to 60, down to 62. And because of some of these actions, we will drop further down. You are not even shy of that. That how do we redeem our, our falling image? You are not shy. You are not embarrassed. It says what we have done is to file a notice of suspension. If Onya FN or Onya TV had not gone to court, I can tell you, you would have shut them down. Now, the question is, what is your motivation? Are you trying to please somebody? Are you trying to pay somebody back? Are you trying to be somebody's good boy? Are you trying to prevent the public from hearing what is the truth about some of the rot that is happening in this country that is swept under the carpet even before they make the light of day? Are you, are you, I, I, look, we did that after issuing them warnings to desist from their professional delinquency. Neither the cease and desist orders nor the notice of suspension constitute sanctions. Boss, your rule says if somebody reports, and, and, and in this matter, we don't know who the complainant is. In this matter, the NMC has not told us who has complained to them. Because I, I, as I told you last week, people are doing Juju TV. People are doing 419 TV. People are doing Sakawa TV. The two children in Kaswa who killed their, their contemporary, they, they saw it, they said they saw it on TV. But because nobody has come to report, then he's not taking action on that one. So when you tell us that they need a season, did you give them an opportunity to be at the table? No. So give them an opportunity to be at the table. Because if you have issue, you don't just rise and say, we are, we are giving it. Have you heard them? As per the rules of natural justice, have you listened to their side of the story? Whether it be foolish or not, have you heard them? And I said the NMC has two lawyers at the top. 
and people who have LLB sitting on it. These are the things that will bring down press freedom in this country. When you finish, you say, oh, and we repeal criminal liability. They're the same group of people. Now, a cease and desist order only warns a criminal. The cease and desist order only warns a criminal, wrongdoer, or a delinquent professional to stop their misbehavior and to withdraw from the lawlessness. So, near FM or near TV have not become criminals. As, as endorsed by which court of competent jurisdiction? Huh? Which court called them criminals? I, I read the letter from Giba. This is the response. And you can see the, the vendetta in the letter. The vendetta in the letter. The bars in the letter. It does not constitute sanctions. And, you know, interestingly, when you want to, when you want to uh, euphemize situations, you put it in parentheses, as has been done. It is akin to asking a pickpocket to stop stealing or to stop a person poisoning the public well, to stop their murderous act. It does not involve any hearing. Who told you that, sir? Even Atai got a fair hearing in court. Even Atai. Even Atai got a fair hearing in court. Even Atai got a fair hearing in court. People said he's dangerous. Carry him, put him inside. Even him. The court says, Atai, let's hear you. People say you are this, you are that, you are that. Let's hear you. Let's go to even biblical times. The lady at the well. The prostitute who was nearly stoned. Was she not given a hearing? Now, op opportunity for fair hearing comes in when the criminal, again, the criminal, observes and ignores the warning and puts himself in harm's way with the law. It is at this point that the wrongdoer faced with the law is given opportunity for fair hearing. So, note it. Unia FM and Unia TV have been called criminals in this matter. They have not been heard, but they have already been branded to make them look bad by a body that is set up to help the media to rise up. We have initiated a process. We assure you that the errand stations may have the opportunity for fair hearing after you have taken the decisions that will affect the people adver adversely. So if the Advertisers Association of Ghana were not wise enough, and they said, oh, because NMC has written that we deal with them at their own risk, and so we cut all the advert, adverts off. And if Giba had not written to you, then you say that, oh, now that we have cut off all their adverts, now that we have applied the sanctions and they are off air, we now want to give them an opportunity to come and be heard. To come and be heard about what? You have taken my adverts. You have taken my frequency. You have shut down my broadcast. Then you won't say you want to hear me. You want to hear me how? You have already shut me out. Is that how you behave? Is that how trained people behave? Is that how to behave? Is it, is it at, at an appropriate forum? Which forum again is appropriate? Your own law says that set up a committee. Listen to the people within seven days. Read the law. Don't misread the law. Don't misapply the law. Don't misunderstand the law. It is there in black and white. I am no lawyer. I have not been caught to the bar. I don't have an LLB. You people went through it. Make your lecturers at Mokala proud. Make your core mates who want to associate with you proud. Make the framers of the laws that established you proud. You are asking that AAG, they cut off their financial lifeline. You are going to insist on cutting off their, their, their what, authorization to broadcast. Then when you finish, you say, oh, they may have, not even shall. They may, as a pair, as a pair, they may have an, an, an opportunity at, at, at what, a fair hearing at an appropriate forum. Which forum, which forum is appropriate? There are rules. Work within the rules. You want to apply sanctions and say that is what the law says. What you're doing, does the law permit it? Give them an opportunity. Within seven days, set up an investigative committee. Let both parties appear before the committee. It's common sense. That's what the law is. Common sense. Let's, let them appear before the committee. Hear them. 
don't cut off, don't write to advertising association of Ghana. So if they were not smart enough and wise enough, they would have followed you and cut off adverts. So the people who work here, their dependents and everybody else, what would they have done? The people who also depend on us, Ghana Water, Electricity, Corporation of Ghana, GRA, everything else, what would they have done? What would they have done? Meanwhile, it is our taxpayers' money that they are used to take care of you people. And it's a question that must be put. Have you given them an opportunity to be heard? That is the outstanding question. Any sane person in this country who wants justice to be served will ask, have you heard the other side? That is what we are asking the NMC today. Have you heard the other side? Not the pomposity using our letterhead, our printer, our ink, our AC, our office, our vehicle, our fuel, our bodyguards, you using our, our everything and finish coming and writes such letter with heavy tone. Question is, have you heard them? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Papa. Oh, my God, bravo. My God, Papa, bravo. Oh, my God, no, hey, man. I'm talking.